Okay, it looks like we're ready to go. Hey, Nolan, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to download all this and kind of edit it and mix in some other stuff. And if you have any ideas, let me know if you want a picture or something. You're looking good, man. I've been researching. Yeah, I've been uh, researching everything uh, you're doing, and it's absolutely outstanding. I'm so glad you're going to be at the United Nations. That is a huge thrill. Yeah, so uh, so um, you're, uh, you're coming out in February. Well, that's amazing. You take all your personal time to get that done. And uh, has Black Lives Matter um, ever done any protests to the United Nations? Well, genocide's a global epidemic. The people at the UN should understand that it's ongoing all over the world. A lot of it perpetrated by uh, the U.S. and its allies through this military empire we have. I recently lived in the uh, state of Hawaii, and the Native Hawaiians, much like uh, Native Americans uh, here on the mainland and in Alaska and everywhere, have all been subjected to similar treatment. Um, um, how, how are things going with the uh, uh, Native Americans? Well, that's great. You stepped up to do this. You know, we talked about briefly before this that, uh, you know, you're on the radar for law enforcement and surveillance. Everyone is these days. Everyone is, including law enforcement themselves or uh, military people. They're, they're all being surveilled, including us as well. So you got to step up and do it. Martin Luther King talked about um, just being silent and, and the problem with that, uh, getting to the United Nations, I got to tell you something. The, the it's run like a club. It's you know people think it's a kind of an international government, but really it isn't. It is a big club. They have no Freedom of Information Act. You can't even request documents. At least with our own government, the United States, with all its problems, at least we have a Freedom of Information Act. You know whether you have to wait four years for everything to be blocked out. I don't know how good it is, but at least we have something. Um, also, they don't have any open meetings uh, that requirement, so their meetings are all closed. The building's closed. They don't want to let you in. They don't have to let you in. Are you planning to um, be able to go inside the United Nations? <laughs> well, people can host you. You know what? On that situation, you can take an $18 tour. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's like Disneyland. You stand outside the UN in the morning. You pay $18. You go through like airport screening. They kind of guide you through. There are no meetings or anything. It's kind of a joke. And you know, you think if you're a single mother with two kids, you're going to pay eighteen dollars times three. There are a lot of uh, you know people here, right here in New York City, who live here. You know, in the area, they can't even go to the UN. It's very expensive to just go visit. It's a you know a private club, but you can be invited into panels and stuff through. Uh, host countries and non-governmental organizations and stuff. I expect you guys will, will hopefully get something, but let me tell you something. I actually was barred from the United Nations. I was going to meetings there for about a month and a half, and I kept asking about when the public was blocked. Uh, and the, After the first bombing of the World Trade Center, they um, just stopped temporarily allowing the public into meetings. You used to get to go in and watch meetings in, in an area. They just stopped it for security reasons, but then they never opened it up again. And so the public has not been there for 20 years. There's no oversight. The media is like Gladfly media. You talk about the worst of the worst corporate media and a cozy, um, just happy to have access, cocktail party mentality. That's what's going on over there. So. Um, we do have a couple of good bloggers over there, but uh, one particularly, Matthew Russell Lee. Also outside the UN, I think where you're planning to protest, they've gotten some special laws here in New York. Um, all the sidewalks are the city of New York. Uh, this, that NYPD acts as the de facto police force for the United Nations. The United Nations has security guards, but they don't have a jail or anything. It's their own deal over there. So really, the NYPD is the, the military, is the police force uh, for the UN, so they handle everything. But they got some special zones on those sidewalks out there where you cannot protest. They put up all these silver things. you got to get permits. They've really limited the area where people can protest to very, very small areas. and. Um, and, I don't, and it, it was upheld in a court of law, a, a low, lower level, I think, about where you can protest and can't protest, but no one's ever really challenged it. I talked to a, a good blogger friend of mine over at the United Nations, Russ, uh, Matthew Russell Lee, and he feels it ought to be challenged. I do, too. You know, you often have to go, when you go into a court case, it has to be appealed, and then it works its way up. But it's the sort of thing that they've curtailed the ability for people to even protest over there. So it's really a private club, and it's... Uh, it's something else. Here in the U.S., it's the stomping grounds, the Yale Club, the Harvard Club, the Princeton Club, and the uh, the 
uh, the think tanks, and then we have our counterparts around the world who are, are, are all in that too. But I'm just absolutely applaud you for getting over to the United Nations and, and, and making making the case. So, um, uh, have you gotten permits and all that, or what are you going to do on that? Well, the corporatocracy, you know, so much of this goes back to just greed. And in the days of slavery, when they were bringing people over, it was for profit. It was for greed and an abuse of people. And that continues today in New York. Uh, I've been here almost six months now. I came out for the specific purpose of following the UN because I knew there were problems. I actually lived out in Southern California myself and in Hawaii. I've lived all over the country. But uh, I came out here to, to New York. And let me tell you something, Wall Street is the root of a lot of this stuff. Does your group have any plans to make, pay a little visit down to the big brass bull down there at Wall Street and uh, have a little presence down there? Uh, maybe in the future. I do have uh, a lot of ideas because, like I said, there's a lot of stuff to get done. There's a lot of stuff to clean up. There's a lot of racism to clean up. Well, that's great. Well, I hope you call out the UN on a lot of this stuff, too, because as America goes, the UN goes, and that's just the, the sad reality. You know, on kind of a personal note, I have a question. There are always these people who say, oh, I'm just doing my job. Maybe they work in security or they work in technology or whatever they do, and they're kind of, kind of, kind of cogs for the man, so to speak, and they just say, well, I'm just doing my job. I've got to feed my family. You know, you're out here doing all this stuff, making it happen, putting up a resistance. I have somewhat little patience for people who say I'm just doing my job. What do you think about people who will inflict harm on others or, you know, even spy on you, a black, you know, your brothers, so to speak, spying on you, doing things for the government or, you know, whatever, uh, just doing their job for a paycheck to feed their family? We're living a lie. We're living a lie, and we do daily in so many, many, many ways just because it's convenient. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I'll put in my two cents here about just honesty generally in society. It's certainly lacking in our society and la lacking within government. I mean, they just lie to you. James Clapper, we could go on and all day, President Obama, everybody just, they just flat out lie. Yeah. And it's, so getting to some form of honesty. And then, and I'll just reiterate, the corporatocracy, the very wealthy shareholders, I have a finance background, a finance degree, I was an investment advisor, I gave all that up for this public service that I'm doing to try to get the world out, to try to make a difference. So I do all of this for free on my own time, my own dime. But uh, really the root, the root of a lot of this evil is greed and corporatocracy, and they are controlling uh, Wall Street and their wealthy shareholders are controlling the United States government and the United Nations, absolutely the United Nations. It's, it's more closed than our own government. And, and that's kind of the wave of the future, these, these, uh, these uh, super, super national organizations, World Trade Organization, UN, we've got to get on top of it because an individual, you have absolutely zero rights there. Yeah. You're supposed to go through your country. So I'm so glad you're calling them out and being there. Nolan, thank you so much today. You're doing a, a, an incredible job. I'm looking forward to seeing you here. I will be covering it all three days when you get here at the UN. And uh, thank you so much for your time today, and I uh, look forward to keeping in touch with you. Definitely, let's stay in touch, and uh, thanks for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Nolan. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you.